Picture this, it's a Friday night and you're having a lot of fun hanging out with your friends. But then someone asks the question, where should we eat? Uh-oh, you look at the time, it's 8.42, you feel your stomach start to rumble, and you know that you're now on a quest, on a quest to find the best restaurant quickly and get your friends to come along. So how do you do this impossible task? Well, the good news is today we're going to talk about a solution called behavioral economics and how that can solve that dilemma. So behavioral economics is the study of decision making, which makes it perfect for this because you're going to try to use your, human, your friend's decision making processes to get them to choose the right restaurant. And so we're going to walk through this with an example. Let's say that you're really craving this burger and the only thing that's stopping you from getting it is that your friends haven't committed to it yet. So how can you use behavioral economics to get this burger? Well, the first principle that I'm going to tell you about is the availability heuristic. The availability heuristic says that when we make decisions, we tend to make it based on the information that we remember the most recently. And so that can probably include information that happened a day ago, a week ago. It's probably why we don't listen to our parents half as much as we should. Sorry, mom. <laughs> so the way that you use availability heuristic is pretty simple. Just tell your friends, hey, I think we should go to a burger restaurant. Maybe list a couple of reasons why. You know, it's cheap, it's convenient. Um, but let's say that you want to take things up a notch and really tap into availability heuristic. So how do you do that? Well, you can light a burger-scented candle. Maybe get those <laughs> magazines they've stashed out, you know? BurgerEater.com, turn on the TV, get some burger commercials rolling. Get people really living that burger. And what you'll realize is people will think, hmm, burgers are a good idea. All right, let's say that now you've subtly influenced your friends to choose burgers, but your friend Bob is saying, let's get McDonald's instead of Dick's because they're basically the same thing, but McDonald's is closer. You know that's not true. Dick's is the better fast food restaurant. <laughs> so what can you do? This is where you can use the nifty trick called decoy effect. Decoy effect says that when we have a choice between two options, it's pretty easy to say, okay, I know what I want. But add a third one, all of a sudden, things become more confusing. And so we're going to try out an example of this just to see how it works. Let's say now we have this third restaurant, La Fancy Burger Bistro. It's super expensive, it's far away, but it's premium. And what your friends will probably think is, heck no, I do not want to spend that much money on a burger. I do not want to drive that far away. But I do want a tasty burger. And so when they look at these two remaining options, they'll think, you know, Dick's is the better burger. I don't care that it's further away. It's just simply better. So your friends will tell you that they have compromised, but you know that actually it's because of the decoy effect. <laughs> Anyways, let's just say none of that works for some reason. We have one more trick up our sleeve, and that is bounded self-interest. Bounded self-interest says that when you're making a decision, you'll try to do the best thing for you, but you're willing to sacrifice that to support other people. And so, you know what to do here? Get your biggest sob story, really tell people, hey, I really have been meaning to go to Dick's for so long, maybe like yesterday I ate it, but today I've been just dying to eat it. Um, <laughs> Maybe tell them you've been listening to this Ignite talk of me talking for five minutes just to convince them. All right, so here are the three different takeaways. Pay attention because these are the ticket to answering that question, where should we eat? First, you have the availability heuristic, and that tells you that the most recent information is the stuff that you're probably gonna use. Just kidding, everyone. <laughs> what I want to tell you is that friends are probably more important than choosing the best restaurant, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so I want to remind everyone that behavioral economics is the study of decision making. And specifically, that means decisions that don't sometimes make sense. Um, and that's okay, because unexpected decisions are the ones that really teach us about who we are and the people around us. And specifically, as an economist, I would say it teaches us about the preferences that we have and how we make better decisions in the future. And so the actual lesson of this talk is not to con your friends into going to dicks, maybe just tell them to go there, but to actually embrace your irrationality. Realize that at the end of the day, we, where we are today is a culmination of those bad and good choices. And that's what makes life worth it. And so you might be wondering, well, Nancy, you haven't gotten to the last part of the slide yet. Like we still haven't answered this question of where should we eat? And my suggestion is to support your local international district. <laughs> So the International District right now is a historically endangered landmark, so I would really appreciate that support, but also it has a variety of food options that you can see on the slide above. Um, and the last thing I want to, to take away from this talk is that when you're deciding a restaurant, you'll probably win some, lose some, 
but there's always dim sum. Thank you. <laughs>